Hi, I'm Z Tech. Welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to go over the Cisco Certified Support Technician Cybersecurity Certification that they came out with earlier last year. And I'm going to go over what this certification entails, if you should take it, why you may not want to take it, what jobs you may want to look for after passing the certification, and my experience taking the certification. So watch this video to the end to find out. Before we get into it, I just want to say thank you guys for 200 subscribers. I really appreciate the growth that this channel has. I'm really happy with the feedback that I've been getting. I'm glad I can help you guys out by making these videos. It only uh, encourages me to make more of these videos and learn more as I go. So thank you guys for all that. So this certification is the first CCST certification that came out in early 2022. They, knew, they now have a CCST networking certification, which I made a video on. If you're interested, you can go see that on my channel. Um, this is a special, uh, a very, very entry level certification for cybersecurity. So if you're interested in cybersecurity, this may be the certification for you. This certification is for aspiring IT professionals. If you're someone who's in the field, um, already in cybersecurity. This is probably not for you. It's more of a entry level certification, someone who is interested in cybersecurity or thinking about pursuing cybersecurity. So, a quick overview it is uh, 40 questions long, 50 minutes long, and you have to get a 700 out of 1,000 to pass this exam. So, not too hard to pass if you have some knowledge on cybersecurity. So, the actual overview of the test, I'm going to go over the one through five of what this test entails. If you don't want to hear about that, you can skip to the next timestamp. So one is essential security principles, which is defining security principles, types of attacks, and knowing things like CIA, um, being able to identify and understand why each part of CIA is important, confidentiality, integrity, availability, how that has to deal with cybersecurity. Um, and then they also have common threats encryptions under this category. So understanding on un uh, common network attacks, and what types of encryption it may do to mitigate certain attacks. The second stamp is basic network security concepts. So this would be TCP IP vulnerabilities, how you can mitigate some of those vulnerabilities, how different network addresses can be attacked. So MAC address attacking, IP address spoofing, uh, DNS attack, or yeah, DNS attacks. Um, set up and setting up secure access technologies. For example, what access control lists do, firewalls, what they're used for, and VPN. And then the third one is endpoint security concepts. So different types of OSs, how they differ from each other, different types of vulnerabilities each type of OS may have to the, a basic standard. Um, software and hardware updating, why patching is important. Um, and interpreting system logs, being able to look in system logs for each of those OSs and understand what's going on or what may have happened. The fourth topic is vulnerability assessment and risk management. So obviously vulnerability management, being able to understand if a system is vulnerable. Um, risk management, if a system is vulnerable, what is the risk of someone actually attacking that system? And then basics of disaster recovery. So someone, if, if someone were to take advantage of those vulnerabilities and get into your system, how would you recover from it? Like, or for example, let's say a fire started in a, your building. How would you guys recover from, from all of that uh, disaster that happened? How would you guys recover from it? And then the fifth stamp is incident handling, which is monitoring security events and being able to describe elements of incident response. So if something is actually going on in your organization, how do you respond and how can you respond quickly and resolve it quickly? So you may be asking, how do you study for this exam? Um, so if you want to study for this exam, if you're taking a plan on taking the CCNA exam, this test actually has some aspects of the CCNA learning uh, concepts. For example, different type of networking attacks and basic type of vulnerabilities and uh, cybersecurity attacks. The CCNA definitely covers some of this certification. Um, also, uh, Cisco has a free skills for all course on their website. I'll have that linked. I'll have all these uh, resources linked in the description or the comments. Um, so you have a, they have a course called skills for all junior cybersecurity analyst course, which is aligns ex exactly with this course. Um, you actually get a cert certificate of completion for doing the skills for all course. So if you don't want to take this $100 certification test, you can just go through the learning course and get a certification once you're done doing that. Obviously, you don't have to take a final exam to get the certification, but it does tell people that you did take this course. 
Um, so the courses that are in the Skills for All are Intro to Cybersecurity, Networking Basics and Defense, Endpoint Security, and Threat Management. So those cover all of the overview that I stated before. So you would able, you'll be able to take all that for free on Skills for All. Like I said, I have it linked down below. Um, you could also use some study books for the CCNA potentially to prep for this exam. Like I said, if you're prepping for the CCNA, this definitely wouldn't be too hard to pass for you. Now some benefits of the CCST is there's 3.5 million job openings in cybersecurity and it's only growing. Um, cyber is becoming a really, really big field. Um, there's so many different aspects of cybersecurity, not just security analysts. You could be a penetration tester, risk manager. You could do all kinds of things in cybersecurity. It's a great pathway if you are interested, and this is definitely a good starting point. Um, there, the Skills for All course is offer, offered in many languages, so that's a good benefit. If you're someone who's not in the U.S. and would like to take the Skills for All course, you can do that. Um, they also have, obviously, free online training through the Skills for All course um so they have free online training from skills for all and you can complete it on your own time you don't you can be working a job and doing a little bit of the course at a time and being able to get through it i don't know how many hours exactly the course is i'm sure it has it on the website but it shouldn't take you more than like a month or two to complete the course another benefit is if you're studying for the ccna and are interested in cybersecurity, definitely try to take this test because obviously the CCNA is a great starting point for cybersecurity but this also gives you a little bit of edge because it's not just networking based it is security based so if you're someone who's training for the CCNA you could probably pass this test relatively easily um, the cost of the exam is also less expensive compared to other exams for example the CCNA is like $350 to take this one is a little over $100 to take and a lot of other entry-level certification exams are like 150 to 200 maybe even 300 so that's a good benefit of it as well so some cons of this exam is that it's not the best certification to actually obtain a employment to get a job but it does go well with having other aspects on your resume so if you're for example someone in high school who wants to get an internship definitely is a good starting point but if you're somebody who's doesn't have any kind of specialization or any leverage other than the certification. I'm not sure if you'll get a job just based off the certification. Um, another con is that it is a very cer easy certification to get. In my opinion, it's pretty easy. Um, and employers will more than likely know that it's pretty easy to get. So that's why it's an entry level certification. Um, and it's also not as known as other certifications. Obviously it's a Cisco certification. So it will be definitely looked at as Cisco, but it's not as widely known as obviously the CCNA, the A+, the Net+, the uh, Security+, Plus, all those certifications because it definitely is a smaller certification. Now you may be thinking, why CCST? I personally advise to take the CCST if you're like, a, for example, high school student or even college student who wants a little bit more leverage on their uh, resume someone who let's say you're a computer science major or cybersecurity major or information systems major and you do want to leverage your uh, resume a little bit more you could definitely pass the certification test and definitely would help you leverage your resume a lot i definitely don't think that this certification alone will get you a job like if you just have a high school diploma and you get the certification probably won't guarantee you a job maybe get you a low tier internship um, another reason why to take the uh CCSEs, like I said, it's easy to pass. You only need a 700 out of 1,000 to get this certification. So I'm not sure what percentage that is because they don't, they weigh it in a different way. So there's not really a set percentage, but they weigh certain questions differently. So uh, 700 out of 1,000 is definitely not hard to get. Um, it's a good resume booster because of Cisco's rep. It's an entry-level cert cybersecurity certification. So if you're going for something higher like the Security Plus or cy uh, Cyber Ops, um, you could start out with this certification. It's definitely a good starting point. Get your, get your feet wet. It's also really good for certification testing. Like if you're not used to taking a certification exam, and obviously when you're paying $300, it's definitely a lot of pressure on you. When you take this certification, it's definitely not as uh, scary as it is taking a CCNA exam or a Security Plus exam. So it's definitely a good starting point if you are not familiar with certification testing. 
Now, my personal experience with this exam, I was studying for the CCNA exam. I took this a month before I took the CCNA. I was able to take this test for free through uh, Business Professionals of America. They have a national leadership conference and you can pay $20 to take a wide range of certifications. And this is one of the ones I took along with the CCST networking one. Um, this test, I got like an 850-ish out of 1,000. So I didn't do as well on this on, as the networking one, but I also did not study for this test at all. Like when I went to the BPA uh, conference, I saw this test and I wanted to take it because it would be good experience. And I thought I would be able to pass it because I am interested in cybersecurity, but I honestly had no prior studying for this specific exam. I was studying for the CCNA and I was able to use that knowledge and all the knowledge I gained from that to do good on this exam. So definitely not a hard exam if you're studying for the CCNA. Um, I've also been in the Cisco Academy for three years, so it was fairly easy to understand the networking concepts and some basic security concepts. Um, another thing I would advise is uh, know some Cisco networking commands or just commands in general, because that did surprise me. I did see a few Cisco commands on the test. Um, I can't go into specifics, but definitely understand how to see um, DNS on computers, uh, what your IP address may be on a computer, both are all Linux, Mac, and Windows. Definitely understand the different types of commands and OS as they are. And maybe know a few Cisco networking commands because they did have a few show commands that showed up. Obviously, it's a Cisco test, so that makes sense. But yeah, understand a couple of the show commands that uh, maybe the CCNA would have on it. Now, in conclusion, I think it'd be a good practice for certifications and it'd definitely be a good start for anyone who is interested in cyber. So if you're someone who wants to pursue the Security Plus or Cisco Cyber Ops, definitely it's not a bad start or even the CCNA, definitely not a bad start because it gets you in the certification mood and all that good stuff. Um, and if you can afford it, go for it. Obviously, it may not be worth it to a lot of people paying $100 to take this test, but uh, I'm sure if you go to a school or you work at a job, they'd be willing to pay for some of this certification. So definitely take advantage of any type of benefits you could get like that. Um, pairing it with a CCST network uh, certification is not a bad idea because it shows that you're also good in networking as well. It's def These definitely go hand in hand together. I feel like if you could pass one of these exams, you could probably pass the other because they yeah, definitely go hand in hand together. Um, really relatively similar certifications. And the price is better than any other entry level certifications pretty much other than some really, really low level certifications, but definitely better than like things like the ITF plus, which I think is maybe $150 and a plus is over 200. So CCNA is like 300. So definitely better price compared to all that. And like I said, if you can get benefits from a job or schooling that could potentially pay for it, definitely take advantage of that. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have to cover about the CCST cybersecurity certification. If you have any questions about the certification, make sure to comment down below because I definitely try to answer everyone's comments. Send me an email if you'd like, if you would rather reach out to me like that. I have it linked on my link tree, which is down below as well. Um, you can also message me on LinkedIn if you'd like to do that. Um, yeah, like I said, I appreciate everyone who has been supportive and watching my videos because honestly i really like sharing the knowledge that i gained from these certifications i definitely am going to build on some of the videos that i've already made for example i might do another ccna video going more in depth about things that you should study for or if you may want to even take the test so that's definitely something i might dive into comment down below if there's anything you'd like me to cover that i have not covered already um obviously give me criticism if i miss something or something was a little uh, mis uh, misunderstood comment down below and i'll try to clear it up so thank you guys for watching. If you guys find this video helpful, make sure to subscribe and like because it definitely helps me out. Thank you guys for watching and this is a Jamesy Tech video and I'll see you in the next one.